and gentlemen, this is Vishal Krishna, the founder of TheUpstreamLife.com. Today I have for you Murli Chirala, who's the CEO of FalconX, a global accelerator program. They're also a $20 million fund in the US. If you want to get product market fit and all the knowledge from their 10 co-founders, then get to falconx.us and check out this podcast. Murli, thank you for being on TheUpstreamLife.com. You know, I've known you for five years now. I've known the FalconX journey from the beginning. How far you guys have come? You've got a immersion program, global immersion program. You've got a fund. Let's start with the history. Ten co-founders, you know, coming in to change the startup mm -hmm. ecosystem. All of them successful founders, and all of them have their own egos, and they have made money on their own. How did you guys come together, and why? I think there was a common philosophy amongst us. Um, even when we spoke last time, I, I mentioned to you, the common philosophy was a purpose-driven uh, need. Uh, in the context of working with early stage entrepreneurs. I think every one of our team members missed that. They saw a gap and despite the success they had and the opportunity they had in front of them, uh, they decided to spend the time and effort to build a purpose. It was done independently for at least a decade. Uh, each of us you know, did our own thing. But I think in 2017, we had uh, um, you know, uh, the Chief Minister of Andhra, Mr. Chandbab Naidu, is basically saying, hey, don't just do this in a, create a formal platform. And that formal platform, we didn't know what it was. Uh, one of my colleagues, um, Raju Indukuri, is, is an amazing networker. What he did was he made sure that all 10 of us, and we all knew each other, we all knew what we were doing as well, but they were all coffee shop, we were comfortable with that because of the purpose of wanting to spend the time with early stage entrepreneurs. We wanted, to, once we got together, we decided the magic was in formalizing a platform and institutionalizing that knowledge. That was the turning point of Falcon X. The idea now seemed possible. So that was the beginning of the journey. Uh, the journey was beginning to find traction. Um, by February of 2020, we had about 42 startups in our ecosystem. Absolutely. It was absolutely vibrant. You were there. Um, there were uh, uh, about six startups at that point in time that we had invested in. So there was an interesting um, uh, paraphrasing that one of my co-founders, uh, who was who on the extreme end of the investment spectrum, uh, who in, essentially mentioned, Murli, we started with the idea that mentorship is the cake and investment is the icing. So the, what did we learn over the years is that we learned that investment has to be the cake, mentor should be the, mentorship should be the icing. So it does make sense. All the startups for them, even though they've raised money, even though they have uh, revenues, they always want to make sure that they don't ever run out of oxygen. And that's where investment is very, very important. Okay, you know, your CEO, obviously, of the place, Falcon X, and it's based in Milpitas. You've taken it global. That's an interesting play, and India is the center of that attention. Why make India the center of uh, startup uh, investments globally? Why? Is it because India has changed over the years, and do you want to bet on India because it's going to be the largest startup market going forward? We're already second, I think. Third, I Third. think. Third. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I think US and China beat us to it. We Most statistics put China aside because it's a closed market. You can't openly compete in that market. So, yes, they've got the customer base and they do it. Everything that we measure, all metrics that we measure are basically looking at all countries but China. Because you can compete, you yes. have access to those markets, uh, and the report, data reported is also uh, reliable. Having said that, India is you know third, uh, but growing so fast that it would be second in, in a matter of a couple of years, a few Absolutely. years. Absolutely, and I think in the center of this is you, BB, Raju, in the Korean set, right. and there are several others, of course. Three individuals, three or four individuals, you guys have made this work through COVID also, that's interesting. So for our viewers, right, you have to tell us, it's like you said, mentorship is also important, funding is also important. I remember you guys when you started off in that space in Milpitas, it was just like a co-working place. It is a co-working like space, but it's a means to an end. Yes. Acceleration is the true yes. uh, work. Mentorship and acceleration was the true uh, effort that went into play here. Remember, 
these are all successful entrepreneurs. And, just, and to just get them all in the same absolutely. room. Absolutely. <laughs> and you have to tell them the scale. You have to tell our viewers the scale of these entrepreneurs. Each of them has built at least a $50 million plus business. Uh, I'm, uh, much, much more. Um, let's say that they've built significant business. The total market cap of the businesses of our team, of, of what we founded as our own companies, team. it was in excess of about $30 billion. Wow. Well, you're talking about serious 20, folks. No, this is, this is serious <laughs> stuff. We've had uh, one IPO, which was a big part of it. We've had a couple of billion dollar exits. And the others were in the hundreds of millions uh, for sure. Having said that, our journey as investors has been you know, a multiple of that. Today, of course, the markets have come, come, gone down, so I had to revise my numbers there. Our investments to date uh, are, are valued at about 60 billion. And we've had about five IPOs, about 14 unicorns. But all said and done, the important thing is, how did we get those 10 members, including myself, and clearly I was one of the more moderate successes compared to my colleagues. Uh, how did we get them into the room and, and then you know, make sure that they made the commitment because a big part of making this successful is their time commitment to mentor and invest. It was a hard thing, it wasn't easy. But I think in them, I found folks that basically says, Murli, we entrusted this, this uh, task to you. Um, we will support you, you call the shots. For a long time, it was hard for me to wear the CEO hat and saying, BV, I need you for this. Praveen, I need you for that. Raju Reddy, I need you for this. But after a while, I started getting used to requesting to a point where I said, okay, I'm making a CEO call here. And it's infectious, you're a startup again. We are. In fact, we, if you looked at the market cap that we had and what we've achieved, I'd say that we would have, we've achieved what a $10 million startup would have achieved or more. We've done it for less than half a million. And you, want to, you want to get into the details of it, how do you do it? Absolutely. So the money that we pulled together was just to make sure that we subsidized the funnel of startups that we got on board. We set certain criteria of the startups. We said they have to be B2B, because that's our experience, uh, experiential uh, part of our uh, journey. Um, the focus is that they should have raised some money in friends and family because the startup journey, the entrepreneur's journey, and you're an entrepreneur, you know that you can't have a plan B. You have I a can't plan go B. back and get a job, I exactly. get what you mean, yeah. So you can't have a plan B, can't go back to that. So we want to make sure you've reached that point where you just know that, hey, you've got some amount of friends and family that now you can't, you've, you, you, there's no way you're gonna back out. At that point in time, that's one marker, uh, uh, a metric. Or you have a startup that has got an MVP and has a couple of pilots, paid pilots. That's a measure of, you know, that it has a larger audience than just one uh, customer. The third is, of course, that you're a serial entrepreneur. Uh, even though you're a serial entrepreneur, the idea is that you still need mentorship because you may choose to do something different. And the corporate dynamic, the purchase dynamics always keeps changing. And then we keep on top of it and we try to help connect you and all that. So the, the big part of uh, this entire uh, uh, Falcon X ecosystems mindset uh, was to ensure that we provided all of that at one place. And it's a platform now. It's a platform. You can apply online. You need to Absolutely. be funded, of course, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but you take them to a step where, like you said, do you have PMF, yep. product market fit, Correct. in the US. Yep. You come there for a mentoring program, take that mentorship, it's probably one to two months. You so so let me, let yeah, me please, put that please. in uh, context. Let's take the uh, Global Immersion yes, Program. Please. Mentorship is an ongoing thing. It, it, it never, once it starts, it generally doesn't end till a certain level of maturity yes. uh, is achieved. And that maturity can be Series A, it could be past Series B, because then you've got a formal board that can guide you, right? Until then, the mentorship of, of the team is so valuable. The one thing that entrepreneurs get from a Falcon X, you know, uh, being a mentor, is that you have access to 10 yeah. Incredible founding partners. And each of them with their own knowledge. With, with their own knowledge, with their own specialties. And where we do not have that skills, mm. let's say med tech, we have expanded our mentor ecosystem to bring in those that are experientially very, very savvy in that space, that are 
actually committing to this. Now, okay. you asked me a question earlier, why India? I think that that's a big yes. one. The founding team members are all um, Indian. Indian origin. Okay. Uh, we don't take that lightly. Um, there have been challenges of trying to diversify this and bringing mainstream, whatever you call it. But when you look at the statistics and you have 50% of all startups founded, funded, or run by Indians, uh, I, I think the That's corporate boards in America are looking at, now every corporate board CEO succession plan needs to have, hey, do we have an Indian in that succession plan? It's it's Starbucks has an Indian CEO. Bacardi, absolutely. The <laughs> uh, Chanel has yeah. an Indian CEO. Absolutely. FedEx, uh, Indian CEO. So the glass ceiling is broken. It it there there are obviously traits about an Indian CEO, whether it's in the education, whether it's in the analytic capability, technology understanding. But I think what uh, the Microsoft CEO has proved is this compassion, empathy. Yes, I think. That, that I think yeah. plays a very, very critical role in understanding both your employees as well as customers. Are you delivering to your customers? Are you keeping your employees engaged in the, in the strategy of going forward? So these are the qualities that are clearly there in what um, the Indian ecosystem. We're proud to say that uh, the focus on, in, in India is not just because it is because the entire corporate America is doing it, so yeah. why shouldn't I be doing it, is my plan. But we don't stop just India-based. We've got uh, countries around the world, the premium accelerators around the world that are reaching out to us, saying we want you to have a reliable. Them, uh, it's what, Estonia, Latvia. Estonia, Slovenia, Slovenia Iceland, yeah. uh, Switzerland, uh, uh, Germany, and Korea. These are the ones. We, we are working with Japan. Um, and clearly India is a big part of that uh, ecosystem. So we are seeing uh, that based on the numbers that we see in, uh, from their uh, uh, startups uh, and their uh, accelerators, put their adequate energies into where we spend the time. Naturally, India is, is obviously going to be the biggest part of the global uh, program. Right. And we still look at all startups that ha uh, are founded in the Silicon Valley and, and the US ecosystems. But I think the exciting part is the global, because when you bring entrepreneurs from around the globe together. They can start new companies there if they wanted to, right? It's I mean, not only that, it, it's like, they, they, you know, Vishal, I know somebody um, that, that needs your company's requirements, I'll introduce you. We are bypassed completely. That is the karutsu we want to create. And so in that context, my founding partners have really um, put a lot of muscle of time commitments, the investments that we've pulled into, uh, the commitment behind female entrepreneurship. I think we are doing our bit. Yeah. We want to do more, as you saw in the panel discussion today, um, that, that we want to make sure that. And so the, it's, a, it's a lot of excitement going forward. Um, but. How, Clearly. how serious should the founders be, Murli? I mean, in a sense, it's not charity, because all of you have been successful, the money is around. So we are you... not a charity. We are a for-profit for entity. So as far as we're concerned, the purpose and the fairness is in the fact that if you're getting a benefit from us, we should get a benefit from some of the equity. We're not taking currency that's valuable, which is you know cash. We take some equity, which if it went through a Y Combinator or, or others, you're giving up six or seven yeah. percent upfront. Which We're is not doing really that. smaller. We're doing much smaller. We're tailoring it to your, the situation of the valuation you think your startup might be at, and and providing you with continuous. And imagine, you would put a, a certain percentage or a certain fractional percentage to an entrepreneur uh, to to an advisor for your uh, startup, but we are talking about access to ten. Yeah, that I think ten is, founders is, who, can, who can actually who open can talk up the on ecosystem. different top topics, who can make different introductions. Um, so I think uh, the other important part that is usually missed also is the fact that while BV Raju Reddy are experienced in uh, helping mature and mentor startups from the beginning to exit, um, their excitement and their focus has always been in the early stage. But amongst our group, we have folks like Praveen at Insight Partners that and uh, Ashish Gupta where they being VCs make sure they, they help the entrepreneurs understand what it would take for the VC to find the value and invest in that value. 
So that, I think, when you're looking at the full spectrum, you're not going to find it anywhere. Now, add to that a Falcon X, a Falcon X Accelerator Fund. Yeah, the I fund think that you introduced, what that is that, 20 million now? 20 million right now. Mm -hmm. We obviously want to have um, volume, which mm -hmm. I said was 15. Since we co-invest, we don't lead. We, we're not the first investors. Um, the, the idea is to ensure that we provide that seed capital in the pivot to the U.S., at least for the global startups uh, that, that pivot there, um, and allow them to get the bridge. And we have syndicates. Yeah, uh, you're that, a syndicate of syndicates too. Correct. Because of the network, it's Absolutely. multifold, right? So the fund itself is to basically make sure we are able to put about 200 to 500, anywhere there, uh, in companies, about 15 companies each year. Uh, and that would be the, the plan. This year, we've put all the paperwork together. Uh, we intend to do a closing by the end of uh, this year. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the good part of it is we already have at least about eight or nine that the, the, the book of business yes. of wanting to fund is already growing. So the moment we close, we are in a position to actually fund. What's been startups. the hardest part of the last five years? Was it uh, just COVID or was it just having the energy of a startup uh, founder and running it like a startup? You know, the, you get frustrations. You know, uh, let me give you an example Please. of uh, COVID. COVID created an unbelievable scenario of, you know, survival. For Falcon X uh, itself. So can you imagine we went through what all the incentive programs that the government yes. had around this, and we made sure at least about 15 startups took advantage of it because we told them exactly what to do. We, we tried it out ourselves. We are a two-member team at that point in time. So we tried it out. Two was eligible for yeah. those incentives. We tried it out. So we got some uh, incentive dollars uh, that helped us as, as a startup. But we enabled about 15 startups. Mm -hmm. And this was only applicable for employees in the US. No. So you couldn't put your 100 employees in India into that uh, pot. It's only for the employees in the US. But that's a significant amount. It is. So it helped us bring that, that comfort and trust that during these really, really hard times that you can rely on Falcon X to find a path to, to you know, soften that uh, That's blow. how you did the Global Immersion Program That's right. Part 1, right? So That's the first part we started was, let's go virtual. Mm -hmm. So we convinced BV to spend a lot of time. You've got a class you're teaching in the universities. Let's bring it and make it virtual and make it a part of a master class of entrepreneurship. So he spent weeks, 724, uh, putting it and concising it down. We did two master classes. It was very well received. People yeah. from around the globe participated in these programs and we would just take about a 30 of these. Uh, the, the feedback was so good that we said, okay, now uh, as, as the pandemic started to break, people started to get comfortable we conceived this global immersion program. It, it was planned before, but it actually took roots uh, when Lochin, uh, my, my colleague and executive director, uh, started putting the, the nuts and bolts into how this thing would work. And uh, uh, all I can say is with BV's help and the rest of the team, uh, the way they supported uh, the success of this program uh, was just amazing. Now, when an amazing thing happens, a lot of other things fall into place. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll give you an example Please. of that. Um, one of the big changes we had was a big enterprise partner that believed in, in our story of providing global access to innovation, Greenco. Yeah. They decided to partner with us uh, and they basically uh, said, we want to have access to that global innovation. Uh, in the renewable energy space, green energy space, and so on and so forth. So um, they took the first bet. As far as we're concerned, that was the first part of demonstrating. Today we have Meta, which is Facebook. Yes. They have uh, their, what, uh, their uh, business messaging uh, unit, which is WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook for businesses. So they uh, uh, decided to jump on board and become a partner. What that does for us is it creates an instant uh, ability for us to take startups and associate themselves with customers. So we're immediately. We've, uh, immediately. And so there's, there's a affinity program that is starting to build in that marketplace. So I think that is a big part of the success of the Global Immersion Program. 
On August 3rd of last year, when we did the Global Correct. Immersion Program, we actually had nine of our startups from India that went yeah. through the program. We had a six startups that went and raised Series A, B, and C. Really? Present. Yes. Such quick time. We, in the five years, we've That's had brilliant. about uh, two companies that went to Series C, uh, about four that did Series B, and a couple of Series A, right? Okay. We had each of one of uh, them present at this uh, event. I have to say, they came in because they didn't need money and everything was good. They, they raised a lot of capital. But the precise precision with which the startups that went through the program delivered the message to the audience was spectacular. You know, why, why do you say that, in, you know, BB and you also have another hypothesis, right? That at some point, India would also create startups within India as 50 million of business coming from India. India. But at this point of time, founders have to go there. You want to tell our uh, sure. viewers that? I, I think it's an important aspect because nobody I, I, understands that US is the largest market in terms of you know, technology. GDP-wise, yes. yes, we all agree that that's the case. But what is different about India and the US is corporate America is the biggest buyer of innovative services. Yeah. I, I quote um, very loosely what Please. one of uh, the CEOs of Am uh, know, Amex about a few years ago who basically said, he was asked the question, why do you need a venture fund? And he basically said, listen, if I just relied on what was developed as innovation within Amex, um, I'd be doing disservice to my shareholders. I need to have a lens, a continuous lens, and I'm quoting him verbatim, a continuous lens to third party innovation so that I stay relevant. I can't think that I've got all the innovation happening internally. And that's what these progressive partners, Meta and GreenCo are looking at, and a few others in the pipeline. But what is very important is, everybody's looking at the outside world. There are technologies that enable that as well. And so uh, the, the, the part of what Falcon X does as a platform is to bring all these elements together, but with the center focus on uh, entrepreneurs. That, that is the big part of what It is significant for India if you look at it, right? With the kind of engineering talent we have, I think I'll see a lot of startups coming in the US. What, what do you think they should do in order to scale up the businesses from India? Do you, said, you said that they need to have product market fit in the US or India first? Do you think they should have some revenues here before, they, before you pick them up through the Falcon X program? Sure. What would you recommend? So the startups that actually come to us cross-border, uh, India to US or from any other part of the world, they've already built a product, they've raised money, they're getting revenues. But this is where, to answer the prior question, yes. is corporate America, even the mid-level manager also has the funds <laughs> to try out an innovation Absolutely. and let it go waste. Absolutely. The differential between a corporate America investment in innovation, buying innovation, spending money, and accepting failure, to what the corporate India does, yeah. I think we've got at least five, 10 years. That's what BV was talking about. The moment the corporate India starts to purchase innovation done in India, and that starts to increase, mm -hmm. then the startups in India will start to say, I don't have to wait uh, to get to 10 million uh, ARR by going to the US, yeah. I can get it here. Get to 50 million and suddenly the, the tables are basically turned. 50 million means you're at Series C. Do you think that'll happen? BV uh, has been very good about reading tea leaves. <laughs> uh, he predicted that India, eight years ago, eight or nine years ago, that India would be generating billion dollar babies, companies, competing the next Googles and Amazons of the world. Happened. Yeah, it has happened. And, yes. and anybody that takes a bet against that is, is doing it against their uh, you know, <laughs> reputation. So all I can say is India is positioned very well. You've got a lot of what I would call the perfect storm to make it all work. So we do see the tsunami. The quality of the, it, it was in numbers, now we're seeing it in the quality as well. We're very excited about what uh, happens. The India corporate will start to acquire. Yes. They will see this as, they will look at Vishal's company that went out, has made $100 million in business, and now it's like, hey, you know, we need Vishal's products <laughs> back here. It's going to happen. And when it does, I think the trends change. India is now in the $10, million, $10 trillion league. And, and so we are in parity, uh, at least in the context of technology and innovation. We'll take a lot, lot longer in terms of getting the GDP there, 
But I think technology parity is very important for us to basically get to a point where I think, uh, in my view, based on looking at a lot of numbers, the world's growth, GDP, total GDP growth and commerce is going to be about 150 trillion. Yes. We're at 100. How do we get from 100 to 150? Nowhere on earth you have the productive capacity to support that growth. And India can. Excepting India. Yes, I agree. And, and so that is the excitement that everybody has. We did that in the service industry. We did that in the SaaS industry. I think we're going to be doing that in the product-led growth as well. And you like deep tech. You, you guys speak about deep tech all the time. There are a couple of companies that you know, are launching satellites from your portfolio. What is deep tech to you? It means so many things. You know, there are deep tech funds. Uh, but what really is deep tech? Well, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. As far as we're concerned, deep tech implies a combination of a lot of technologies put together. You know, AI, ML, that goes deep into security, you know, whether it's cryptography, or it goes deep into, you know, uh, Industry 4.0. The, the point is, it goes deep into those specific verticals to solve very, very complex problems. And the world is moving in that direction because there are new measures and metrics that are forcing industry the ESG, for instance, yes, sustainability, uh, sustainability goals uh, that are being actually imposed on measuring the boards of public companies. And so there are new companies that are basically providing the tools to measure ESGs of various companies. So the exciting part is that the, the, the innovation is happening continuously and the world is becoming more complicated from a technology perspective and we've got to solve those complications with new uh, yes. solutions. And the world is not resting. I mean, if you look at uh, security, for instance, the, the, the folks that pro they perpetrate the fraud, uh, they perpetrate, uh, you know, um, rogue activities is increasing. They're always a, a step ahead. I think we're getting to a point where quantum compu computing yeah. and other technologies will start to provide strengths to be able to solve those problems. So but that's deep tech to you? That's, that's deep tech, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's taking technology with a combination of, I mean, today the, the biggest buzz in the world is chat GPT. Yes. You know, uh, open, open that AI. It's amazing. There was an article in New York Times by one of, of the Pulitzer Prize winner who basically challenged people to find which paragraph in there actually was generated by this uh, generative and AI. I, and I think you can't tell. He, and, and he basically gave a clue in the last paragraph saying, I usually don't use that word, so that's the paragraph. And, and it flowed so well. Uh, and we've been trying, or in fact, let me put uh, this uh, out there. The invitation that went out to the program here was generated by uh, ChatGPT. What I'm trying to indicate to you is, this is the tip of the iceberg. There are technologies that are already further along that are basically communications. Just you, you create solutions by just talking. So what it does is non-tech folks or, or you know, seven, eight-year-olds or, or the, the, the uncles and aunts that are non-technical, they know solutions. They can talk solutions, natural language-driven solutions. This is happening. It's happening in every frontier, whether it's in the healthcare frontier, whether it's in the security frontier, communications frontier. So very excited about what is happening in there. And we want to be a, a part of that. Absolutely, uh, and India should play a major role for that new knowledge, will. right? You're right. Uh, look, look at the excitement in, in our conversation, yes. right? What it shows is you spend 724 in, in doing this because the, you, you're seeing that there's no end to this. This is going to get bigger and better. And what you need to do is to make sure you spotlight the right ones that yeah. bubble to the top so that, you know, clearly they get the visibility they deserve. And for us, it's the same thing, which is to make sure that we invest and mentor those kind of companies. And they, a lot of parallels between what you Correct. do and what I do as well. You know, I'm a fan of history, Amurli. And, uh, you know, the reason the valley grew is because of meritocracy, you know, and accountability. Murli, you said Nandan is has played a significant role and he's a visionary of our times, agreed. And Ada has benefited, benefited India in many ways. Why? I think, uh, you know, it benefited because when I sp speak about the political will, today's political system is basically looking at the true effects, mm -hmm. empowerment. And they saw in Aadhaar something significant. So, in looking at that and fast-tracking this adoption and, and rollout, 
was one of the biggest positives that came and that demonstrated the political will. Because they saw 10 years ahead of what this could do. And so today's UPI owes its existence and success to those political decisions to keep Aadhaar going so that it enabled and unlocked the potential of something amazing. You know, all the vegetable orcas which we were used to when Can we were imagine? kids, they all have uh, you know, phone, pay phone pay and uh, Google, Google pay, pay and all that. It's just unbelievable. And, and anybody from... QR codes. We, we're about 20 everywhere. or at least 10 years or 20 years ahead of US in that context. Um, I, I have to say that uh, it, it goes... The, the, sometimes it's hard for people to see the vision and that's the marketing genius of Nandan, mm. is that he worked with the bureaucracy, he worked with the politis, politicians, he worked with the, um, you know... Private the, companies. Private, private companies. Private talent, let me say. Not only that, to, to attract private talent, but there was another part of it that the people were worried about in terms of privacy. Yeah. Um, so there were these... Oh, there was uh, a big narrative then. Correct. So to address the narratives, he worked with all the, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the people that basically uh, represent... Correct. Uh, consumers. Got it. Um, he made sure that everybody understood the value, that it was a positive, virtuous cycle that we shouldn't look for solutions that solve 100%. That Aadhaar would get us to a point where, you know, multi billions of dollars that are being leaked, it'll start to stem it gradually and eventually. And we get to a point where it starts to then become more and more. Uh, and proof positive, phone pay, UPI. Uh, the next part is healthcare. So it's it's amazing what uh, this uh, foundation is actually you doing. You said there could be a health stack, India. and I'm saying there could be a logistics stack also. There could be agri stack. Commercial uh, for for people to be like the Amazon. There's there's a new stack that's being developed that will allow every small business to plug into that stack and have equal power selling their products. So it's an exciting time where. The, the, the dots are lining up for India to, you know, I, I'll quote one investor, and, and I don't, I forget his name, but he's, he said, here are the 10 reasons why I'm going to be stopping investing in the U.S. and then moving all my, telling my LPs to move all my investments to the, to the India ecosystem, $150 million of it. It just proves a point that people are taking the serious, the, the India ecosystem of entrepreneurs very, very seriously. They may be looking at the B2C because India's market of consumers, sure. the consumers are getting smarter. Access to information, access to the ability to decide what is a good product versus not a good product, the ability to leverage social media to make sure that uh, the word gets out there. Everybody has a voice now. And so all of this is leading everybody in the right direction. But India also has the ability to look at what is ethical because I, you look at the, when I talk about the political will and the, the bureaucratic implementation, they're always looking out for the common person. They want to make sure that, let's make sure that this is not abused, that this, does, this has no biases. And so even the AI aspect of what will be deployed will be subject to those filters and that's the exciting part of it, is that no matter what, it's interesting. we can't expect utopia but we take the steps towards utopia and that's what India is doing at this point in time. Why do you think the valley is the way it is? Uh, do you think India can be that? India as a whole country? Because when you look at Texas, it's as big as India if you look at it. That's right. So I'm just saying, can India be like a valley? Why, why not? I mean, I think we have to set our goals and aspirations bigger than, um, you know, as, as Naren Murthy said today uh, in the, this thing, we've got to set our goals much, much loftier. And I think we will achieve. Shoot for the stars and you get to the yeah. moon, you've really achieved Absolutely. something already. He said something like PSPD, which is predictability, sustainability, sustainability profitability, profitability, and, and de-risking. De-risking. Yeah. So it's, it's an amazing mantra that worked for him in the service business. Yes. And that's what BV picked up on basically saying that, well, that's what the product-led growth also talks about, and this this is applicable there as well. And that the exciting part is to yeah, be because he's BV has built a product company. All of you have built product companies. Yep, it's interesting. So that's how you think India will grow. Uh, it, it is uh, India has a lot of potential. Let's put it that way. Give we me the color of founders, Murthy. Yeah. I mean, when you meet them from India, first time coming to the U.S., uh, what are the typical things that they don't get? And this PSPD thing makes a significant. Uh, uh, no, I mean, I, I think learning curriculum for this. There's two bro. types of founders I've yes, seen please. in the cohort uh, that came. 
One that was early stage, they've just, just barely raised some money and, and uh, we in our desire to be inclusive, uh, uh, help them get the visa to participate in our uh, cohort. But they were, they were startups that had raised uh, 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 you know, a couple of million dollars uh, in seed money, um, reasonably uh, well capitalized to, to pivot to the US. But what was interesting is the eagerness with which they came and we took what I would call the before and after. So pitch your product and we took what they, how they spoke and on the technology day when they looked at themselves, that's not me. The change, the transformation was amazing. And it was in, in a very short period of time. And here's what, where the, the difference between the cohort one and cohort two is. In cohort one, they paid their way. Many question, why should we pay? It's a yeah, lot of money. Absolutely. But in the grand scheme of things, I want all startups to understand that when you spend $10,000, if you are successful, it's meaningless. If you fail, it's still meaningless. So 10,000 is better than hiring somebody and spending yeah. a quarter million dollars. Which is what everybody does in the US. They, they do that. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that's what happens. But in cohort two, what we're doing is because of the participation of uh, our partners that are funding uh, Falcon X in, in the partnership itself, we, we are diverting some of that uh, capital to actually paying the select startups $10,000 to be part of the cohort program. So we've reversed the pyramid now. You flipped it. We've flipped completely flipped it. We will pay ten thousand as as a, a, a fee to participate. We are paying them. How? It, it's a non-dilutive uh, scenario, but the important thing is, it, it, we want to make sure that the entrepreneurs feel like they're not losing out on the opportunity to participate. But again, we are a small group. We can only handle so much. So let's say 15 at a time. So if you pick all the 15, you want them to succeed. You are very clear from very the beginning clear. that we are picking these guys because they have the will to go and do things in the US. And that has to be rigorous. It, I'll give you an example. Yes, After the first cohort presentation that happened last to me, we had 60 applications uh, for participating in the cohort program. We interviewed each and every one of them. So you do spend time with everyone? Every night, my, me and my team spent from you know, Pacific time to Indian yeah. Standard so Time you, was you uh, drill them, so drill nine them, eight, nine p.m. to twelve p.m. midnight. People would stay awake in my team. Me, Vivek, Lochin. You know, we do it. Uh, talk to each and every one of these uh, startups. Select, and in the when we got down to the last few, we would bring in the next year of my founding team members to listen to this, and then we got the nine that we selected eventually. We're going to doing fifteen this time. We intend to get about 10 from, from India again this year. And the idea is that, uh, you know, we will cover the costs. Which is great, right? Absolutely. The $10,000 come to you. Absolutely. And then you go and uh, take, yeah, I mean, and it, it costs about that. Only as soon as they Travel. come in, as soon as they come in, do, you, do they got start a space. selling? Well, they can. Okay. And in fact, we had one startup that Vivi was talking about, uh, where they actually learned in one of the sessions in terms of how you actually do market, go to market strategy. They applied it with a customer and they actually succeeded. The same customer that they were trying to work for many months, the strategy flipped and they actually got in that, that uh, founder came back and said, hey, I'm just amazed that it actually worked. So as, as far as we're concerned, we, we think that startups will benefit significantly and from this. And they switch, switch from India to that. Um, when they're ready. Some of them may feel that it, it depends. Like structurally, they have to flip. If you want U.S. investors to invest in your company, you, better flip. you need to flip. Yeah. That will make it easier for you to raise capital. You can still raise capital otherwise as well, but to raise capital with fewer barriers is to flip it where the IP resides in the U.S. entity. Fantastic. Now, one very important thing that I want to communicate to the viewers that may be policymakers as well is that by doing so, we're not taking away anything from the growth of that uh, entity in India. In fact, we are fueling that growth. The success of making, getting customers for the startup in, in, in the US uh, is going to only increase the scale of, of product development in India. So it's only going to multiply it. And so that I think is very, very good uh, for, for and uh, looking at how- And that's can take in the fund, 20 million fund too. If, I, if I'm ready for the US and you think we're, yeah, absolutely. we're flipping, 
I can access 20 million fund if I need it. Absolutely, uh, that, that's the investment that we would do. Okay, yeah. Okay. any particular themes? I, I, I remember in the morning you told me that there are no themes. You can come from construction, can come construction tech. Med tech, yeah, med it can tech, be anything. Yeah. You know, hospitality, uh, it, it could be in uh, uh, an interesting company in, uh, um, in the medical field, very deep medical technology related. We, we are able to connect them to the right mentors in that space, you know, that, that they would not otherwise have access to. Would you like other funds to be part of this? Do you think you exactly. can, you, you mentioned syndication briefly. Uh, would you be the lead investor in any case? Or would you say At that get point, a lead investor and then we'll come in? There, there are more lead investors than you can count. <laughs> you don't have to worry about lead investors. What, what we need, what startups need, is that seed capital of transition as they build value. So. Let's talk about the global startups. When yes. they've raised money here and they come there, they're beginning to spend money now, right? So when they spend money while building value, it's, it's going to mean that they're consuming the money that they've raised. To raise new money without building adequate value is, is death. So what they need is capital to sustain them, bridge them to have reached that Correct. value point. That new money uh, that brings uh, an equity makes sense for everybody. So that is what we do in what I'm suggesting. Falcon X will put that bridge money as an investment in a safe note. So that's why we don't term sheet, we don't do anything. And then help these companies build the value. Some of the syndicates yes. join us in this context. When we built enough value, it's almost automatic that you see people okay. coming and saying, hey, we want to be your Series A lead. Okay. Multiples will do that and then you start to sell. Okay, I want you to differentiate between a Y Combinator and find its startups. Obviously, you, all of you in the Bay Area, then San Francisco, you guys are in Milpitas. They obviously take a significant stake and they put in, put in money too. And they have they behave like a syndicate in a sense, they do mentorship too. How different are you? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's extremely uh, different in the sense that They've got a track record that attracts. Absolutely. And so they've grown horizontally. <laughs> so they're a brand taking, by themselves. Yes. yes. They, they're taking a, a very large. One thing is very true, Vishal. The pie of startups is so massive. Yeah. It will take 10 combinators, you know, 20 Falcon X's. You add all these together and multiply it again. It will take all of that to quench that thirst of entrepreneurship. That's I the got only it. way we're That makes a lot of sense. So as far as we're concerned, there's no competition. <laughs> We do certain things differently. Everybody's formula is different. You know, there's a Harvard MBA and there's a Stanford MBA. You told me. Both are really good. Yes. You know, it's up to you to choose. Now, you know, the, the point I'm saying is at some point you have decisions to make. Do I get a, a FUBAR education or I get a, a, a Ivy League education? You make the choice and the outcomes are going to be justified by based on that uh, choice. And we believe we're putting and assembling together the story uh, that is going to be unbeatable. Uh, okay. And you know, it's an open uh, formula. Anybody then can copy, cut, paste, and do it because at the end of the day, we won't empower the entrepreneurs and startups. And, and the one promise we extract from these entrepreneurs is pay it forward. Yeah, I got it. And you're okay with failures? Come we're okay with they're failures. They're okay to come and say, we want to pivot. That's the whole point about investment. Every VC knows that the success rate is less than 30%. They, they, the, the, they, they start to pound their chest when they get to 35, 40% success rates, exits, and so on and so forth. So they need one bumper, you know, which is a 1,000x or a 10,000x. The rest of them can be 2, 3x, and then the rest of it is all you know, done. So, uh, yeah. so it doesn't matter. Everybody's willing to take that risk, and that's what venture capitalists do. Uh, and, and as far as we are concerned, it's all additive. The yep. risks need to be taken in order to fuel uh, and, and these founders have given you energy, Murli. I mean, you you are so energetic. You're out there, and you know you're talking like we're you're, learning. Yeah, you're learning as well. Yes. Um, I, it's the same energy I see in you and talking to all these startups in every podcast Thank you. that you do. Thank you. Um, the exciting part, Vishal, is um, it's a two-way street. Yes. You know, your excitement is is. Uh, <laughs> is very, very infectious that it brings the excitement uh, come out and then we're basically making it a positive virtue cycle of uh, our conversation. I wish founders watching this have the same energy and they come to uh, Falcon X and do this. You mentioned BP a lot of times and in fact, even in the opening speech, you called him a mentor and a guide. Why do you do that? I mean, we all know BP Jagdish as a entrepreneur who was successful. Well, he was sitting right in front yeah. of me, so I did that uh, for sure. 
Um, I've got equally committed uh, uh, founding members. Raju Reddy is one of them. Yes. Uh, Praveen Akiraju is uh, another yeah. one. On demand. See, at the end of the day, most of the entrepreneurs come and say they want to talk to BV or Raju Reddy. Yeah, because they're right? the well-known names. So, right? so uh, <laughs> we, we try to uh, triage that to ensure that I get my chance yes. to be a mentor, uh, that uh, Krishna gets his chance to do his mentorship right. and so on and so forth. But it is now starting to allow us to get more mentors into the equation as well. Uh, that's what uh, the platform is all about, is to ensure that when a startup comes, the message about the startup goes out to all. There are hands ra raised about, okay, you know, I like this area, I would like to mentor this company. So you've got multiple mentors that suddenly look at this. It's, it's an interesting paradigm. You know, I don't think I have a solution for all of this, uh, but um, Raju Reddy has been an incredible mentor. Um, Praveen has been an incredible mentor. Uh, Ashish Gupta is a, a yes. terrific mentor. He's known in the India yeah, ecosystem is. as one of the first venture capitalists yeah, Helion, uh, in, yeah, yeah. through Helion. So the exciting part is we all play our role. I mean, when you look at uh, Krishna, Krishna is an LP in you know at least a half a dozen funds out there, and uh, you know as far as he's concerned, he's a pioneer. You know the work that he did in the semiconductor and microprocessor space, it is amazing. People don't you know we don't be, uh, pound a chest, but. His voice over IP technology is, is found in tens of billions of devices out there that actually use voice over IP. And the smartphones? Chips. Yep, absolutely. Now, would, would uh, uh, you know, people talk about that? No. At the end of the day, that's, that's the qualities of the founding team. They all make it easy for me. And that's the best part about what I thought. Initially, I thought, God, how do I actually absolutely. make these uh, elephants I remember dance? in 17, you said, <laughs> you know, I, you know, it'd be very difficult to get all of them together. Uh, it was very, very <laughs> hard. But these elephants are dancing. And when they dance, magic. it is magic happening. And I'm very excited that we've got another tier of mentors that are falling in place. And these are not mentors who want to be posters on, on my website. These are committed mentors, so giving time. So every mentor has, has an engagement that says they're going to commit to a certain amount of time on demand. OK, what next for you, Murli? 12 months? Uh, do you get time off at all? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's that's the good part. The best part of it, when you learn, when you love what you're doing, and and this is not my saying. This is a saying from a lot of wise men and women out there that have done this. The day you think you're working, you've yeah. got to do something else. And so, most of our team, and I think that's what entrepreneurship is all about, is we enjoy what we're doing, and the enjoyment doesn't make it look like it's work. It's like you got know, it. you're looking forward to okay, what is. Uh, another wise man once said, I, you know, I, I don't know and I, it's not mine, is that when there are challenges, then an entrepreneur converts that to opportunities. And Absolutely. that's the excitement. And I wish all of them do that. And uh, what's the website? Where do they, is, is it falconx.us? It's falconx.us. Okay. Um, there are... Bunch There's of a crypto there. FalconX out there, not that I'm giving them any Absolutely, uh, I know service. them too. They raised a lot of money recently. <laughs> well, so but I that's the crypto that. yeah. world, as you know. And then there was an, uh, actually a hardware acceleration company uh, uh -huh. called FalconX.com. That, that's no longer there. Yeah. Um, but we uh, pride ourselves in what we do. Okay. Um, so go to their website, guys. FalconX.us. Apply if you're a startup. And if you get selected, you'll have to fly to the US, of course. Spend three weeks with yes. us. Uh, ex extended for a little more time on your dime. The three <laughs> weeks is on our dime. The 10,000 allows you to do that. Um, but the point is you learn so much, even for repeat entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs that have raised you know, a $10 million Series A benefit from this. It's just amazing because somebody who's raised $10 million is not going to still meet the chief marketing officer, one of the most progressive companies on, on earth. That's the reality. That's what we bring to the table. And so I think um, the word is give it a try. It's, it's, um, you, you'll come out of it absolutely excited about what you've learned. And even if it's a small amount, that learning is just uh, okay. worth taking home. Is there a deadline to this court? Uh, right now, we, we don't have a deadline. Mm. The program starts April 24th. So we will start to work out uh, to take these applications. Mm. And you know, we're getting the word out even to the other global markets as well. Uh, in Estonia and Switzerland and so on. Uh, but the, the deadline will be announced on the website itself uh, okay. as we take but it. But so currently it's open, they can go apply. It's completely open. Mm -hmm. We provided a QR code in, in the Global Immersion Program flyers that we sent out on the website and so on so that uh, they can go ahead and apply. And then we'll start to okay. put together in, okay. an interview process.
Have you been reading? Do you find time to read books anymore? I try to read. Uh, what I do is when I catch a, a phrase that sometimes just stands out, something that I that, I, 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 that I, I collect as an opportunity to, you know, uh, language. Forget English, just as a language. Somebody can actually put together a few words that, is, that stands out as something so incredible, that communicates something so incredible, then I go read that book. Okay. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit uh, of, of prodding for me uh, okay. to read a book. It's one of those I've collected a, a fairly good amount, and your book is one of those uh, as well. Um, so I read chapters uh, at a time. It's just you anything know, in uh, particular you want to tell us? Do you... uh, uh, no, uh, I'm waiting for BV's book. Let me put a oh, plug B for that. Okay. BV and uh, Ashish are putting together a book. Uh, not Ashish uh, Gupta. Uh, there's Ashish Mehra. They're putting together a book on product-led growth. I know Ashish Mehra, capital capital. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. And so that book uh, should be coming out. And I am hoping that Falcon X gets the first dibs of doing the global launch of that book uh, at Falcon X. But that's going to be the first uh, uh, exciting part of, of the book that I probably have to read because... Uh, you, you know, I'm so happy to have done this podcast simply because a lot of you are first generation guys who went to the US. You know, and, right. uh, and that opportunity is now coming back in terms of knowledge that you guys are bringing on the table. I hope uh, people use that wisely. You know, as far as we don't see it as a, as a duty or a responsibility, uh, but I think it's, it's something that, uh, um, that for us has given us a significant purpose, uh, motivation, and it's profit. Absolutely. We're not shying away. So we, you can call it what you want, but at the end of the day, um, it's, it's a fair win-win for everybody involved. So thank you very much, guys. This is uh, Murli, of course. Uh, he's the CEO of Falcon X. The website's falconx.us. Go apply if you're a startup that wants to go get uh, product market fit in the U.S. Murli, it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you, thank you, very you much, so Michelle. much.